Hello and welcome back to the Villainous Vampires. Last time we found out that our Empire thing wasn't- I was correct! We are allowed to give away kingdoms, it was just not working for whatever reason. So, I think we decided that we wanted to keep this one when we were previously working it out because we have most of the land within it. It's kind of central, it's kind of a good place to keep. I think this was the one we were going to keep. Um, this we're going to keep- we weren't going to keep Kislev. We weren't going to keep uh, Bolsgrad. We don't want De Jure on, actually. Bolsgrad split, spread out. Kislev's actually quite small and maybe is a good one to keep, actually. Mm. Maybe we keep Kislev, actually. I think we keep Kislev because it has our Merchant Republic underneath it. So, we're going to give away uh, Translink. And we're going to give away Bolsgrad here. Okay. So, Bolasgrad, we're going to give away to this guy here, because he controls most of the land underneath it. We can't give it away to him. Oh, okay. But we could give stuff away to our son. Can we only give Grand Counties to our f dynasty? No, maybe you can only give it away to Blood Pact. Maybe that's why we can't give it to this... Can we give it to this guy? No. Ah, you must only be able to give it to Blood Pact. Aha! Uh -huh. Interesting. Well, that changes some of it. Um, how about we give our son the one up here? So, this one. That seems reasonable. Uh, include lower titles. There we go. Our son now really likes us because he gave him all that land. And we have a very powerful vassal. Need a new marshal. Uh, Kislev guy. You can be our, our marshal. Go uh, train troops or something. I don't know. Um... There we go. Let's try to find the one province that we could do that on. There we go. Uh, what we're going to do next? Probably, if we're going to give away Bolasgrad, I would want to give it away to him because he controls most of it already. Do we have any vampires down here? Like, um, you're a vampire. We grant you the Grand County of, Bolas of uh, Bolasgrad. There we go. Bolasgrad's all underneath... I an actual person. Cool. We need a new marshal, actually. Uh, how about our son, Gerd? There you go. And you can go train troops with your very fancy hat. Right. And then we keep the other kingdom. That's good. Now, this is really good because it means that the vassals that we can raise troops from are actually a very small number of vassals now. So, uh, we, like, we can raise them wherever we want as well. That's kind of good. I, I don't like that Dobrian's still too far away, but we can still raise them up here. We have vassal troops raised. We do, in fact, have vassal troops raised. Uh, there we go. Reinforce their levies a little bit. Uh, good, 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 good. Everything seems fine. Um, Doberin, I actually kind of want to put you underneath Bolasgrad. Just because of how it... To make it look nicer for me. I would like to transfer you. I can't give you this guy for some reason. Can I give it to my son? Transfer vassalage. No. So, Dobrun, I just can't give you away to anybody. You're does your part of the High Kingdom. Ah, it's because you're does your part of the Kislev one, and that's the thing that we can. Tr we already control the Grand County of Kislev. I don't know. It's difficult to work out. Maybe I can only give it to a does your. Whatever. Doesn't matter. We got it done. Right. Who are we going to attack next? We have a lot of prisoners. Hmm. I think. We should attack somebody big. Maybe you. You have a very small number of allies. You have a lot of troops, though. You know what? We can do the sacrifice, then declare the war, can't we? So we could say... So we could sacrifice a whole bunch of troops, then declare, declare... How about Ostland? I can't reach Ostland. The Ungols? What could I take from you, Ungols? Say if I was to do a holy war, I could take... Those two provinces, I could take these provinces. Or I could take these provinces. So I can maybe take those ones in the center, and then that would give us an access to Ostland, and we can start taking over the Empire that way. Imperial Talabekland, you are Talate. What about Talabekland? You are also Talate. So if I was to declare a holy war on you, things would go badly. Uh, you are your own thing. You only have 3,000 troops. But you do have allies in your uh, underlings. Mm. 
I think if we attack the Ungols to give us access to Ostland, we could get a good attack in on Ostland. Let a really good holy war going in there and then just assault the whole thing down. How strong are your things? Your garrisons aren't that strong. Okay, yeah. Let's go and attack Ostland. We'll head down here. Yes, and now these guys are just going to create everything. They're just going to create, like, all the duchies, all that stuff. It's going to be great. Change crown authority. None of it's necessary to worry about. It's just, uh, they're going to do it. Right. Uh, do we still have all of our prisoners, or do they just randomly disappear? No, we get to keep our prisoners. Fantastic. Our uh, small prisoner farm is starting to grow. Yeah. I think there was a suggestion that, um... It was a while ago that you get people who are maybe married or something, and then you uh, get try and get them imprisoned, and they or get or you try and imprison pregnant people so that you get children who are then imprisoned, and then you can get more, and then you sleep with them, and then you can then get more prisoners for free, and that sort of thing, which I thought was a very interesting and minorly evil strategy, but uh, we can't do that obviously because. Um, we are not able to get our uh, prisoners pregnant. Maybe uh, if we can convince our sons to be lustful, we can do that. Anyway, yes. Weird conversation topics aside, we are now here. So, let's just start. Sacrifice for ritual. Sacrifice for ritual. Sacrifice for ritual. There we go. Goodbye. Right. I would now like to summon my undead. Uh, a large horde to serve my every need. Definitely. Yeah, we'll take all of those. They all arrived in Zerden, didn't they? Well, walk up here. That's fine. <laughs> we'll wait. We'll wait. That's annoying. Is, am, I, am I, for some reason, not leading this army? Yeah, I should be always leading this army. That's very annoying. Also means that our capital got the negative penalties, which it shouldn't really have, but that's fine. Hopefully this horde lasts long enough for us to do something with. It also gives us time for some of our vassal levies raised too long penalties to actually just uh, burn off. Which is nice. Remembering, we still have more people to sacrifice, so, you know. It's not like it's too much of a problem. If this, if this army is sacrificed, you know doesn't make it all the way, we can just sacrifice another three and keep going. Because the moment that we're able to assault, we can actually start getting more and more prisoners co uh, consistently. Which is what we aim to do. Usually you end up with too many prisoners you can't do anything with. Now we're ending up with prisoners that we can do with, like, too few prisoners. And, uh, we ex know exactly what we want to do with them. Right. Uh, anything happening in the world? Ooh, th these guys actually became independent. Like the um, Nurgle people in the center. And they're fairly safe because they have a truce with Ostlands. So they're actually going to have time to grow. Cool. Uh, how's our religion looking? Our religion is fine. Yeah, it's starting to actually grow into different provinces. It's not great, but you know, it's there. It's uh, def that people are definitely converting. And now that we have kings, they, they will do a lot of the converting for us. And... More importantly, they'll actually kill some of the revolts for us because they'll be able to raise a large enough levy to kill the revolts. Anyway. Continue filling time while we wait for this army to make its long way across. Going province to province. Exciting adventure of the undead horde. Walking directly through the lands of the people who we are about to attack. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to go... Uh, we're going to assault their capital... Then we're going to go and attack these provinces down here. Like we're going to attack all of these provinces straight afterwards. Yeah, we have enough to assault their capital, I think. Uh, they might have 1,400, actually. We might not have quite enough. As we have 7,500 just here, then we're going to get our king people, and he's going to provide us more troops. It's going to be close, actually. Um... Yeah, well, I guess we can just raise them all here. No problem. I would like to declare my war. I'd like to declare the Holy War for Engrad. Cool. Uh, cannot call in our allies. I'd like to raise troops here. 
So there are 9,000 troops. Let's attack. Let's see how many we've got. Can we assault? It's basically the first question. It's going to be close, I think. This fight, on the other hand, is not going to be close. He called somebody into his war. Yeah, we can assault. Uh, it, they do have the green pox, which is unfortunate, but uh, we cannot die, so that's, that's also a good point. Three, two, one. How much this is? 5.6% every 12 days. Uh, we are going to assault it down on the next tick. Like, at the end of the month, we'll assault it down. And there we go. We'll get a morale tick. Wait for the game to save. And... And there we are. Assault. Goodbye, army. We lose a whole chunk of our army as well, but... We got the assault going. Uh, we got no new prisoners. Cool. Now we're going to go and actually get the land that we need. That goes 35% though. That was good. The League of uh, Kinora. Is that a king level title? It is not a king level title. It's, a, it's like a duke level title. Oh, he just created a second duchy. I see. Oh, the fact that he has two duchies means he could create a kingdom. Which would be nice. That's kind of the ideal way you want them to create the kingdoms. 31st. Oh, we're also arriving on the 31st. Will we catch them or will they escape? We caught them. So, goodbye army. You are completely screwed. There we go. 52%. Uh, no, we can't cast magic as much as I would love to. Uh, I'm seeing if any of these places have lower garrisons or something like that we could attack. This one here is a lower one. We'll attack that one first. Just see if we can get more prisoners before we uh, actually go and attack them more. Right. We can assault this one down in 10 days. Four, three, two, one. Assault. Assault. Please actually assault. There we go. You have to, I had to pause before we'd accept the input. We'll lose a lot of our troops. But we will take this province. There we go. Now just uh, continue beating these guys up. We're, we're now lose, we, we've lost a lot of our undead. But that's fine. The undead were going to disappear anyway. So we're just using them for as much as we can while we have them. We catch in here, 26th. We'll arrive on the 27th. If we cancel their movement, can we catch them? 29th against 28th. Ah, we're going to have to chase them all the way through. There we go. Third now. Okay, because it cancelled our movement. Just seeing if we can get enough against the Ungols to just uh, tip it in our favour. If we get them to peace out without having to do any proper sieging, that's pretty much where I want to be. Uh, definitely going to destroy this guy. Oh, and we'll cast our magic on the battlefield. Wind of Undeath. Cast magic. Curse of Years. Cast magic. Ray's dead. Cool. Continue combat. Focus on offense. Hooray, he's dead. Right, and the battle is won. There we go. 74%. We're going to head back over here. Get another 25% by sieging down this province and we'll be done. This is going much quicker. Probably there was a better way of doing this war, but I like how it was just now. Did we get any new prisoners? Got no new prisoners. We still have our old prisoners. Yeah, we have to just watch out for when our undead die. Because if they die during the middle of the siege, bad things could happen. They're probably not going to happen. 3.1% every X days. It's fine. If they raise up any reasonable army against us, we can just kill that and that will get us our war score. Oh, we got good, uh, we got good, uh, RNG on the, um, on what's it called? The siege event. Because I just noticed their morale just dropped, like, 10% straight away. That's good. And now we just wait for the siege to finish. No problems. Should be fairly simple. I was worried that we didn't have the game unpaused for a second there, but should be simple. They're sieging our land? That seems, uh, that seems like cheating to me. Oh well. That's fine. Also, they seized it with 23 men. That's impressive. Someone else joined our fight. Okay. We got some gold. 
our uh, gold reserves are starting to build up again. Okay, morale is uh, continuing to drop down. Uh, we got more technology points, not really anything we need to worry about. Yeah, we're worried about uh, technology points once we're sure we're actually going to keep our capital, because our capital is a little bit in a bad position. Uh, very soon, it could be in a good position. It's just right now it's uh, bad, but if we could get some holy wars against them, that'd be fine. I'm just always nervous about attacking the Imperial guys because they kind of hide their power behind strong vassals. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. Uh, whose army is this raised up here? This is the Boliscrad army, which means he's at war with someone else. No, he's just in this war. Oh, he's getting rid of it. He's getting rid of raiders. Oh, I see. Yes, smart. Okay. Uh, raiders have arrived to loot and pillage. Yeah, yeah. They always arrive to loot and pillage. That's just what raiders do. Raiders are uh, mean people. All right. Uh, we have an army one province next to us, which will probably be where we end up getting our war score if we don't have it here. We'll uh, win the siege, kill their army. That It's almost definitely enough war score, I'm sure. Right. Uh, still 3.1% every 12 days. Uh, they got a good siege event, which kind of cancels our, our bad siege event earlier. This is why I'm not too worried about like getting rid of all of our leaders to make siege events go away. It's just like, you get good ones and bad ones while you siege. They take so long, it's like, they just cancel each other out. Doesn't really make too much of a difference either way. And it means that you don't have to remember to reassign your leaders when you forget that your leader isn't assigned and then your troops all get raised in the wrong place. That'd be awful. Anyway, defenders are almost done. Auto save, cool. Yep. Uh, very exciting. Oh, okay. Uh, what do we want to do to our people in our dungeon? No, we do not want to wound and injure them because we would very much like to sacrifice them. They got to be treated very nicely, kept alive, and then sacrificed. We should probably sacrifice the older ones first. Just because they'll die, they have more chance of dying first, and then we can keep the younger ones for longer in case, like, you know, so we have some stock. Anyway. Defenders going down. Continuing to go down. Oh, yeah. Um. Yeah, another. Uh, it's just over 100 days. Okay. Uh, we've got an arm. Oh, we've got raiders being killed in the top right of the screen. Perfect. Someone won a siege. But yeah, these raiders are now actually being beaten back by the kings, which is fantastic because it means that we don't have to worry about it anymore. Kislev God Uprising. That's not a very big uprising. Come on, kings. Continue to be good. Go kill the uprising for me. That's also the nice thing about um, King Vice Royalties that we were talking about. Might be in this episode, might be in the last episode. Uh, we're just going to keep the information to ourselves. But yeah, could have been this episode, could have been last episode, but basically, uh, King Vice Royalties give you the chance to, um, I forgot where I'm going. Yeah, they, they give you no rebels, I believe. Or like, like, they give you rebels that aren't your problem to deal with. I think that's right, anyway. They might actually get rebels totally normally and I'm just talking rubbish, but it doesn't matter because we just won this war, right? Yeah, we just didn't get enough things to win this war in that one bat. Like, how did we only get 8% war score for that siege? That's annoying. I think you should get war score based on the amount that you control of the province that you're actually declared war for. Like, you should get ticking war score on that. At the moment, you only get ticking war score if you control the entire thing you've declared for. But it's like, we control most of it and we have an army. They're like, oh no, we're still in the war. We're, we're really strong people. Like, you're not really. Uh, Stuart Graf did not think if uh, notes, uh, probably did not think I would notice a few coins went miss if they went missing. Uh, okay, we'll question them. Uh, he was innocent, it was the cook. Okay, fine. This siege, 3%. Ah, uh, I think we have to go kill the revolt. Yeah, I think we have to go kill the revolt and then we'll come right back. Well, actually, this seems like a good point to end the episode. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.